Skyrim remains one of the most popular Elder Scrolls entries, and we have all spent countless hours in it. The problem with a game that is played for more than a decade is that its vanilla version will inevitably show its age. However, thanks to the modding community, the game always feels fresh. However, there are certain, let's call them small issues, that haunt the game to this day, which even mods can hardly address, and that most players hate. In this video, we will address these issues, pretending that Todd will watch this video and will improve on them in his next installment. Todd, if you are watching this, like, subscribe, and write in the comments, I am Todd, so we can send you a Baldur's Gate 3 CD key. Goes to Baldur's Gate 3, Baldur's Gate 3, Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3. The game starts off with the urgent dragon crisis. The World Eater is back, and there is not much time. The Dragonborn must do something. This urgency element adds spice to the game, making your actions seem more meaningful. The only problem is, it does not exist. <laughs> After the attack on Helgen, the player can go do whatever he pleases. He can start a business, go to the Bahamas, mine rocks, kill Nazim, become a scientist, become a porn star, or just irritate other NPCs. Besides the occasional dragon attacks, Alduin's plan seems on pause for the convenience of the player. This is a serious problem for game balance, especially because, let's face it, when you are faced with a tough enemy, you can just simply walk away, farm the shit out of the game, and come back. Which brings us to the second issue, dragons. Besides the fact that they look more like wyverns, Skyrim's dragons are hard to take seriously. One normally expects dragons to be a truly powerful threat. Instead, after the first couple of dragon encounters, their aura fades away. After the attack on Helgen, the people of Skyrim have somehow adapted to dragons. Guards are able to put down dragons with simple weapons without your aid. That may explain the Dragonborn's lack of urgency. After all, sometimes the best way to solve a problem is to simply ignore it. Skyrim's follower system is a big part of the game. The problem is, well, the followers themselves. They are sworn to carry your burdens. However, a few dozen hours into the game, they become a burden themselves. The game does not have the best AI, and with followers that accompany you through the entirety of the game, this can become annoying to say the least. Repetitive lines, path blocking, setting off traps, making you fight 10 bandits at once after alerting them, are just a few issues that make you want to shout your followers off the throat of the world. And since the modding community focuses on the more important stuff in life when improving your followers, most of the issues remain unsolved. By the time Alduin stops his rampage at the start of Skyrim, Helgen is destroyed, and dozens lie dead. The Dragonborn survives this tragic destruction, revealing their special status as the protagonist. The problem is, he is too much of a protagonist. All the events in the world are tied to him so much as to seem like nobody is doing anything useful. A prisoner with no backstory who was seconds away from being killed is now involved with every single problem to every single faction in the game. He just has to do a few good deeds, and he becomes the leader of the faction. He is on a mission to save the world, and is simultaneously involved with the Civil War. The only person that is independent from the Dragonborn is maybe Nazim. But all he does is walk through the city, casually insulting the lower-class citizens. This factor makes the world seem dead, with no one being able to do anything useful but you. Okay. In my previous video, I talked about evil things you could do in Skyrim. A couple of them involve children. I don't want you to think that I am some kind of child hater, but children in Skyrim really irritate me. Look at these little brats. They are as creepy as they are annoying. They all look the same, sound the same. They all have that weird blank expression on their faces, and some of them are especially annoying. I frankly do not want to download mods to improve them, so I am stuck with these child NPCs that suddenly take on adult size. Damn, that's creepy. Wolves usually are not that big of a deal. It takes one hit to kill them. After some time, they just become annoying, since you can just one hit kill them and move on, but they appear at every two steps. It's irritating when you've turned fast travel off. 
and if you decide to turn it back on, the stupid wolves can prevent you from fast traveling. One time on my way from Riften to Windhelm, I encountered 20 bloody wolves. How do the people of Skyrim put up with this? I know most people don't leave their town or village, and probably because the wilderness is crawling with wolves, but still, some kind of wolf population control is sorely needed in the province. I doubt the ecosystem can even support that number of wolves. It may not be for everybody, but just because it's for me and it's not for you doesn't mean it's bad. Why would you want to go kill a, a, a goat, a pig, whatever? Well, that's different. Why is that different? Goats and pigs need to be managed too, so... Okay, after this video, I will appear like some kind of child-slash-animal-hating fanatic. But I must include why horses in Skyrim are a headache. Besides the fact that they are slow and that they do not follow you, they always bloody die. They try to help you in battle, they do zero damage, and then they die. You are a horse. Run away. They cost 1,000 gold, and if you steal one, it does not become your own. That means when you fast travel, you do not find it in the destined location, and when you dismount it, it just wanders away. It is as if the horse has a higher level of thinking and knows if you paid for it or not. It just acts stupidly when you enter a fight. The looting system in Skyrim is confusing. Most of the chests you open are unrewarding unless you like hoarding useless items. Sometimes you find high-level loot like ebony armor in Dwemer Ruins, which does not make a lot of sense. This was not always the case, as in Morrowind, the loot system made more sense. For example, if you were in a Dwemer Ruin, you would find Dwemer armor. Then Oblivion came along and made the looting system randomly generated. There are mods that can fix this, but they are not available on console. Which brings us to the next issue, which is unmodded Skyrim. Skyrim is great, but besides the glitches that remain unfixed since 2011, the game is showing its age when compared to modern RPGs. Unmodded Skyrim can be fixed by, well, mods. So, why have I mentioned this issue? Well, I needed to make a top 10 video and ran out of ideas. I am joking. It's because, contrary to your belief, a very small percentage of Skyrim players actually mod the game. And a large portion of this small group are on console, and console mods are very limited. Console players only get a small sample of mods approved by Bethesda, which is a shame considering that Skyrim's modding community is the biggest one ever. Skyrim's puzzles feel so easy. It becomes hard to fail them, unless, of course, you are one of these guys. Often, the game itself will walk the player through the steps needed to complete the challenge. This makes the puzzle system more of a time consumer than a point of difficulty. It is like these doors aren't there to lock outsiders out, but rather to keep the Draugr in. That's all for today, folks. If you made it this far into the video, thanks. Like and subscribe and tell us what is your most hated thing in Skyrim. If you enjoy our content, click on the videos that appear on the end screen. See you in the next one.